If you want to be a quant, the interview is a big hurdle that you need to get over in order to be successful. The technical part of this interview is a make or break segment. In this video, I'm going to go over three generic questions and their solutions. And if you want to check out some of the resources I'm using, um, I shall link them below. However, I will do more of these videos. Okay, so the first question we have is, um, if we have a g prime of x, what can we say about the derivative of g inverse of x? And essentially, this question, uh, what this question is um, trying to get you to go along the path of is the um, the formula of uh, the derivative of d of x of the inverse of x is equal to 1 over g prime of the inverse. And essentially, this is what you're going to need to prove in this question. And the proof is actually quite simple. It's about um, three or four lines. So if we say that um, x is equal to x, which is obviously true, I'm going to take the um, I'm going to take g of the um, inverse, so that's just um, literally doing nothing to it, because um, this is just this cancels out each other. So it's, we still got x is equal to x, and then what we're going to do is do the derivative of both sides. So we get um, this, and again, obviously this is because we're balancing out. It's absolutely fine to do. Now here, what you need to use is the fact that uh, we're going to have to use the oh, sorry, got x there. We're going to have to use the um, chain rule here. Now the chain rule um, is basically saying if I do this in a different color, just over here, the chain rule basically says uh, d of uh, d over d of x of f g x. And this just equals um, f uh, prime of g x times g prime of x and so we can see that the values are a little bit different here so we're going to let f equal g and then g equals g inverse and then we're just going to plug these in and, and then the on the left hand side we're going to get that uh, so this will be g prime of g which is the inverse of x times uh, g g prime of x However, g prime is going to be also oh, g is g inverse, and so we just do the d over dx of uh, sorry, be g inverse of x, and then this is obviously just equal to one. And so, because we need to get this formula, we can quite easily see we have it here with this. And so, we're going to solve for this and get d of d of x of g inverse is equal to one over g prime inverse of x. Quite a nice question and um, a good one to start off. Okay so this question is going to be a little bit more different and uh, it's going to be a lot longer than the last one. So we've got the question that derive um, e to the x to the power 4 where x is normally distributed with mean um, 0 and the deviation of sigma squared. Okay so what I'm going to use here, there's a few ways to do this, um, obviously you can use the fact that um, e to the x4 is just the integral of x4 x, sorry, x to the power of 4 of fx dx where this is just a pdf of the um, normal distribution however that way it uses um, it uses part um, integration by parts and it can get a little messy and in an interview environment um, you don't want to be uh, you know integrating for ages and um, you don't, you don't want things that are going to trip you up easily. And so what I'm going to be doing is using the moment generating function. Because I think this is a little bit um, easier. Um, so the moment gener generating function is simply um, mu t uh, plus a half sigma squared t squared. Now in the question we've got that um, mu is equal to zero. So this just becomes, so this here is zero. And so it just becomes um, e half sigma squared uh, t squared and this is just m x t. Now if you haven't um, been introduced to the moment generating function before, uh, so this is basically e to the x and then the you take the derivative of this to be get to get um, e to the um, x squared and so so on and so forth and so the general form is m to the m to the n x is equal to um, that. Okay, so let's get on with it. So, first derivative is going to be um, e to the x squared. And so we just write that as this. And we're going to take everything with respect to t. And this is quite um, obvious what this is straight away. So it's just sigma squared t e to the half 
I think we've got T squared is going to get rid of this on the right side, so it's a bit cleaner. Okay, and then that is the first um, moment done. Ooh, so now we're going to check out the um, second moment, and here we can just use the product rule, and so we can say that f is equal to e half sigma squared t squared, and then derivative of that is as we had before sigma squared t e half sigma squared t squared and then g sigma squared t g prime is just uh, sigma squared and then we're going to do that times that plus that times that and so the first ooh, so the first one is sigma squared e half uh, t half plus uh, sigma t sorry sigma 4 t squared because we're doing this times this here e half uh, sigma squared t squared and then we can just take out common terms so we've got sigma squared common and obviously the exponential so I'm going to leave that in for now I'm going to put that on the right hand side just here like that and then we get um, sigma squared plus t squared and that is the um, second moment like that okay so now we're going to go on to the third moment and then again we can use exactly how we did before uh, where f is equal to uh, sigma squared t squared f prime is as before and as you can see this is just a bit of a nicer um, way of approaching it rather than the, um, the integration by parts because um, like I said in an interview it would be quite stressful to do this sort of thing so f is going to be, uh, sorry g is going to be the um, this plus one plus actually I'm just going to expand this all out just to make it a bit easier to read um, sigma four e e t as squared is that right yeah that's right and then g prime with respect to t so we this goes and then we just get I'm going to keep that one um, we're going to get two t sigma four and again same as before that times that plus that times that and so we we'll get uh, 2t sigma 4 e as before and again uh, take the right take this I'm going to put this in brackets just to make it a bit neater t squared uh, sigma uh, sigma t 2 e and then again as before nearly there uh, I'm going to put e straight on the side because we know it's common in everything squared t squared and so we've got 2 t uh, sigma 4 plus sigma this times this which is 4 t plus sigma 6 t cubed and then we can do again uh, we can take out t which is common and uh, sigma 4 I need to also just just a um, general good practice make sure you keep your t and sigma on the same side I know I've got t first here and sigma here so it's a bit of a bad notation on my part so I'm going to do two um that's just two oh actually no because these you can see that these actually um make minus a three so we have that just um that's this side here plus that side is equal to three and then plus um two squared sigma squared e half squared t squared and this is equal to m3 x as t and then finally we do it one more time to get the e of x to the 4 so um, so just that and so again we've done it um, perfectly so far so we'll carry it on and there's, there's not really that much to this question from this if you've got this part this far you should be absolutely fine doing the final steps and then G, oh sorry G nope G is equal to um, 3 T sigma 4 I'll make sure I put T first in this this, this version um, T cubed uh, sigma to the 6 and then G prime with respect to T we get 3 sigma 4 plus 3 2 uh, 3 T 2 sigma 6 and again final step 
to get the solution we're going to do uh, what I'm going to do is put straight away just put so I have to write it out again if I put e uh, this on the right hand side and so we get 3 uh, sigma 4 plus 3 t to the 2 sigma 6 and um, plus might have to actually just move this out like there okay um, and then I'm just going to do this times this part here so we've got uh, 3 t squared sigma 6 plus t uh, to the 4 sigma 3 uh, 8 um, is that yep okay and then we can see that these two clean up so it's 3 sigma 4 plus 6 it's uh, t squared sigma 6 plus t4 sigma 8 and then we have the e term sigma squared t squared and then just to make it a bit neater I'm going to take sigma 4 out because that's common in everything so we get 3 uh, plus t uh, to the 2 sigma to the 2 plus t4 sigma 4 and then e half sigma squared t squared and then when you um, use the moment generating function you need to find out what the value is at t when t equals 0 and so let's plug in t equals 0 for this so it's just uh, simply uh, the final answer is that e to the x4 is just 3 sigma 4 and then that that, that, that that's the question done and as you see it's a bit longer than the previous question but it's, it's I think it's easier than um, doing loads of integration by parts and when you're in the, um, in the interview it's just a bit nicer okay so the final question we've got is um, it's quite a short and sweet one it's quite a nice one as well um, so this is going to, going to be um, assessing your sort of probability um, skills and so, so there's uh, three judges in court who have the following probabilities of reaching the correct verdict so judge one is p judge two is p and judge three is a half a verdict is only decided if at least two of the judges agree uh, we need to find out what the probability of the court reaching the correct verdict is uh, straight away what i'm going to do is um do the probability of the wrong verdict so i'm going to do j, j1 for judge one and then following and so the, the opposite is going to be the opposite, so it's 1 minus p, 1 minus p, and then because it's a half, we're going to get a half here. So, so the there's, there's two ways that they can um, get the correct verdict. And if we, if we see here, at least two of the judges agree. So if we do correct verdict, there's two scenarios in which this can happen. So the first scenario is um, if all three agree. Okay, and then the second scenario is um, two agree, and then this is going to be or so it's going to be, um, we're going to be adding up the probabilities. So let's look at the first case where all three agree. Um, so this is going to be that uh, judge one agrees, judge two agrees, and judge three agrees. And clearly, this is going to be p times p times a half. So this is just p squared over two. Now the next um, verdict is going to be if two agree. This is going to be a bit longer because we need to um, check for the combinations of each one. So let's first say that the judge one and two agree but judge three doesn't agree. So this is going to be um, p times p times the judge three not agree which is going to be the opposite of it which is again a half. Plus the um, option that now judge two doesn't agree. So judge one and judge three agree. So let's do uh, p. Judge two doesn't agree. This is going to be one minus p times a half. Now in this question, I could just do uh, two times this because the probabilities of judge one and judge two are the same. However, I'm going to do it um, as all three options in case um, in in an actual entry the probabilities aren't the same. So now we've done judge one agreeing uh, sorry, judge, yeah judge one agreeing uh, we're going to check decide that judge one doesn't agree with the other two so again this is just one minus p times p times a half and then we can just write this out as p squared over two plus p over two minus p squared over two plus p 
here um, over 2 minus p squared over 2 and then we can write this out as uh, that cancels with that and then so this is just p this plus this minus p squared over 2 however we need to also add the fact that uh, the scenarios are all three agree so we're going to add um, p squared over 2 plus p squared over 2 and so we get the probability is just equal to p so if you've enjoyed this type of video um, be sure to let me know and i will be doing more of this type thank you